We caught a we caught a, a blitz from uh, both sides of the, of the ball, and me and uh, Iman Marshall we had a, a miscommunication and who was going to actually be the blitzer. You know, it, it was so loud in here. You know, you know I applaud their fans. Their fans are, you know, they travel well. You know, it was it was so loud in here. We miscommunicated. We both came, and one of us should have been on Darius Stewart. So that was a bust of coverage by us. You know, I take the blame for it, me being the safety, me being the, the vocal guy back there. How about some of the pauses? First quarter, essentially, you guys shut them down. What was the biggest thing there? How were you able to do that so effectively? Uh, yeah, you know, I think it was just, just the whole first half, really. I mean, they scored, what, 10 points. Uh, you know, we were just, I mean, we were just playing, we were doing what we do, we were just playing ball. You know, we were, we were all doing, we were everywhere we were supposed to be, you know, and that worked out for us. So when you guys see as a defense kind of a pick six, something like that, what does that make you guys feel? Is there an added pressure that now you have to deal with a whole another seven points on the board? Or? Uh, I mean, you, know, you try not to think about it. You know, the thing, the, the thoughts that go through your head, if they get a pick six, we got to come back and get a pick six as well. You know, that didn't happen for us today, but, you know, that's just the thoughts that go through your head. What would you describe as the biggest difference between the first and second half? Uh, I mean, I don't want to call on my team or anything, but, you know, the will, I, I, I kind of felt like we just, like, like we didn't give up, but, you know, the, the one-two really wasn't fully there, like, in the first half. You know, the first half we showed we could play with anybody in the country defensively. You know, we were, we were, we were stopping, we were stopping them three and outs, you know. They, were, they weren't throwing the ball over our head or anything like that. You know, they had the one touchdown where our player thought once the receiver goes out of bounds, then he's dead. But besides that, you know, we were we were playing real ball. So how much of that first half type of stuff was because of the energy in the building and you guys just jacked up and you fell off real quick or what happened there? No, I wouldn't say we fell off real quick. We were just, you know, we still had the same energy. But, you know, you know, it just didn't work out in our favor. What was said at halftime, anything? Like it was such a big transition from first to second half, and you said that desire to win and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean to the defense, nothing was really, you know, was, was really said because you know we were doing our thing. To be honest, we were, we were, you know, stopping them. Like I said before, you know, they they just said to keep it up, you know, but it's kind of deflating when you we come out in the second half and we we bust the coverage, you know, being my fault, and then the whole. The whole defense, you know, gets deflated. You know, that's, I mean, that's hard to come back from. You know, we felt like we were on such a high, and then we hit a low real quick because of miscommunication in the building. You guys shut down one of the most explosive receivers in Ridley. Yeah. What was the, how were you able to do that so fast? Adore Jackson. That's all I got. I mean, he followed him when he was in the game. Whenever he came in, Adore went to his side. No matter if we were in man, no matter if we were in his own, Adore was on his side. You know, Adore is one of those type of guys. Or he can do that every week if if we need to be, you know. It was gonna be a big task. Him, you know, coming uh coming here and trying to stop Calvin Ridley. You know, we had certain matchups we wanted. You know, I was on OJ Howard. And he was on uh uh Viggy was on our Darius Stewart, I was on OJ Howard. And then uh uh Dory was on uh Calvin Ridley. You know, I feel like for the most part, you know, we play well in our matchups. How comfortable do you feel playing up here? somebody so big like OJ? I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, com you know, I'm comfortable, you know, I'm, I got the heart of a lion, so, you know, I feel like no matter how big you are, I mean, you're going to have, you're going to have to have a great catch, a great, uh, a great toss and a great catch to beat me like he did right here on the, on the one seam route, the quarterback, I was outside of him, the quarterback threw it on the hash and he went and made a grab on it, but, you know, it's, uh, it all comes with it. You know, me being like 5'11", he was 6'6", six, six, he got like seven inches on me. But I'm all heart, so, you know, I would never back down for nobody. And they told me I was going to I was gonna stick him, and, man, you know, I got excited. You know, he's supposed to be one of the top tight ends in the country. So it was time for me to really shock and play with him. What changed when they changed quarterbacks and put number two? Uh, it's just something, it's just dual threat. Now you got to worry about him running. Now in, in some calls, you don't have a post safety because the post safety is going to have to come up and stick the, the QB, because if you don't bring them up, then you're going to be outnumbered.
So, I mean, he was, I give it up to him. You know, we didn't, we didn't even think he was really going to play, to be honest. And then they, you know, they brought him in and, you know, early on, early on, we, uh, we kind of stopped him. You know, he, he had to fumble, he had to jitters or whatever. You know, we stopped him. And then he, as he got comfortable, you know, he's going to be one heck of a football player. Would you say you guys are maybe a bit underprepared for him? No, not at all, because we were preparing for him two weeks in advance. You know, we thought he was actually going to be the starter, you know, because there was so much praise about him. So we, prefer, we were preparing for the dual threat the whole time. Chris, I know you guys hope to be a championship caliber team. Yeah. When you lose a game like this, what do you learn about your team and where you guys need to grow to be able to be that kind of caliber team? I mean, this is a reality check, you know. It was a, I mean, we had all the confidence coming in. You know, we played well early on. And then, you know, but we have to be more consistent. We have to play the whole game. We can't have a, a good first half and then come, in, come back and just, you know, pee on ourselves in the second half.